immortality. Let's live forever, yo. Who's ready? <laughs> nah, you know what? I'm not. I'm not even speaking about. I'm not here to talk about like what you guys think, which I know what you think. You think I'm talking about like the is it Steve Sinclair, the Ray Kurzweil's, the the billionaires, especially in Silicon Silicon V is V Silicon Valley. Everyone's trying to live forever. In fact, some experts predict that we'll be able to live up to 20% longer over the next 100 years. That means children today might live until they're 145 years old. And what about immortality? Well, turns out even that's not out of the question. History is littered with unusual attempts to defy death. In 1920, for example, a Russian scientist thought that he could prolong life by sewing a piece of monkey testicle to a human's. And even more shockingly, this idea caught on. At least 300 people underwent this procedure. And we all know that that's where the bulk of these guys' investments are going. Yeah, they got the give us pledge, Bill Gates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Anyway, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about linking up um elon's r robots to sam altman's gpt and then downloading your brain waves you know that's not real right that's what they're going to be doing eventually but that's not going to be you that's not the real you you're more than just brain waves brain waves can be like you can just create brain waves eventually you can just recreate brain waves anything but that's not you that's the same as having all these recordings or like, let's say Pac, you listen to a Tupac album and saying, oh, he lives, he's living forever. Yeah, sure, that's his voice right there. But mm, that ain't him. He's gone. That's an image. I'm talking about really living forever. And we all know only the spirit God gave you does that. And um, it's not really that deep though what I'm going to say. Um, not that it's clickbait, but it's not that deep. It's just something I thought about, a different way of looking at things. Ephesians 6, verse 2 to 3 says, it's a commandment, and it says, Honor your father and mother, so that it may go well with you, and that you may enjoy a long life on earth. When I was in my 20s, um, I did a lot of time wasting. That was like my main activity. Time wasting, pro. Graduated, PhD in time wasting. Like chasing girls, drinking, partying, smoking up, yeah, whatever. Anything you, anything you can name that a young 20-year-old college kid does. I was doing it. And my dad died when I was young. So my mom and my uncle were the two adults in my life, the parents, figures, parental figures. My uncle stays in Zambia though, and I stay in another country. So of course they tried to course correct me and give me advice, but I never really listened um, because I was young and because high school sucked. And I was like, just trying to, you know, freedom, you know, for the first time I was living at college and whatnot. And I had a lot of stuff issues in me as most of us do and, and don't realize and are too young to realize and i was just dealing with it the old the good old-fashioned way of just you know it's cheaper than therapy let's just put it that way how i dealt with it so when i got to my 30s i was thinking this just the other day and i was I had like a bit of a revelation and i thought you know what I wasted a whole lot of time. I could have been so much more productive. And I know you've heard this before. Of course, it's been said time and time again. What you do in your 20s, it's the time, you're young, you have the energy, it's going to set you up. If not, you're going to be late, you're going to do it in your 30s. I was thinking about Ephesians. And I was like, you know what? If I had done what I was told and given the advice to do by my uncle specifically in my 20s, I could have saved myself a lot of time 10 years to be specific a whole decade and you might think well that's just 10 years um it's 
not a whole lot more but the 10 years of your 20s counts for like maybe 30 years going forward because whatever you don't do you're going to try and catch up later and if you realize it in your 30s then you can still you know do some jordan peterson says you still got a chance but you're behind and you're busier and you don't have as much energy and you don't have as much time and you're not as free and and and, and. you realize it in your 40s that you messed up and you have to catch up your 20s and your 30s so that's actually three decades that you go missing but then you're not going to catch up those two decades in just one decade maybe you can maybe you can't but usually it's going to take you even longer so you understand how it's like time compounds negatively if you waste it and therefore your 20s are the time when you go from being basically a kid to being a fully grown adult if you play it properly you can go from being having your first job to being paid like an intern or entrance salary to being paid at the end of it uh nine eight maybe even ten year working experience salary and depending on what kind of career you have that could be a substantial increase yeah substantial increase and you could go from being a first-time business starter to a 10-year business owner another substantial increase if you survive the 10 years already statistics say it's a successful business you could go from being a single young man young lady to married with kids so you see that 10 years is actually huge and if you miss it un and be unproductive and be destructive in fact which most people a lot of people are think about catching up with all of that but with much less time because you're now probably working in your 30s or 40s or 50s have another job so you have to study on the side do whatever on the side start your business on the side with less um, energy just in general you lose energy as you age with less options and i didn't listen to my uncle because i was young naive and i thought i knew everything as most of us do and because well i compared his success which is relative it's okay like he did okay but he's not a billionaire he's not a successful musician he's nothing that i was being shown on tv social and that's the thing these days it's only getting worse you know because everyone looks like they're doing something crazy but it's like at the end of the day the advice he was giving me was coming not only from his success relative success as a man as a family man as someone who grew up with brothers i grew up with a sister and my mom so you know the male just that male influence as someone who grew up with i mean my dad was his brother and my dad was did quite well so as someone who's seen other his brothers do well as someone who's seen his friends do well and his friends fail and who's been in relationships and all of that compounded and just in one and he was giving me that but i just saw it as oh this is who you are to me you know and i love him he's like my he's pretty much he's, he's my he's my dad you know but like i was young so i didn't take that on and if i had taken that on you know how they say take advice no matter what you're doing with business whatever so that you can learn from other people's failures and you don't have to repeat them and of course there is value in making your own mistakes but not unnecessarily so like you can just you don't have to make every single same mistake that's why billionaires and these guys it's not the money that they pass down that's why i don't like this whole oh no he got money from his dad oh no he did this no 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 that's just excuses generational wealth is not as important as generational knowledge it's actually the lessons of how to use money that are important that's why these guys that's why they keep succeeding and that's the thing which we have to keep in mind and if you don't have a tight-knit family i know it gets hard so honoring your parents becomes hard if your parents are abusive or if you 
single parent household but whoever's in your life I believe god always sends you someone um most people um to just help you and guide you along the way have the humility to listen just listen just be like yo just listen what what, what could it hurt this person seems so much more and they're talking from all of that even if they won't specifically say hey this is who i saw fail here this is who they just speak from me because no matter what they say it comes from whatever they've experienced so yeah it was just something i was thinking about what i think i always used to wonder honor your mother and father and by the way this is the first commandment with the promise so the the actual promises so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth and i was always like what's the connection with that why connect that specific commandment to longevity and i'm like long life honor your mother and father maybe maybe it's because they they told you taught you to look both sides before crossing the road and you now avoided dying from being hit by a car and so i guess you're living long enough I don't know. I was always like, I don't know. I don't know the exact connection there. It is, and I saw Jesus, so it is my take on it. I'm not saying that's exactly what's meant, but it's just something that came to me, and I thought oh, that's that's maybe pretty cool to share. So yeah, I think that's the the reason that they said that is because if you honor your parents and listen to them, and not even just from your twenties, but like from day one, it's gonna save you catching up in your 30s 40s 50s so therefore it actually gives you your 30s 40s 50s and therefore you have a longer life because your life is lived because i do feel god when he speaks about life maybe he doesn't speak so much about long length longevity sometimes as much as it's about quality of life not quantity but quality of life i mean if you live 50 years but you successful at 20 married with kids you see your kids grow they live a full life do all of that 40s you retire end of your 40s and 50s you're on holiday the whole time you live until 60 it's a longer life than if you live until 90 and single broke maybe an addict no family that's not really living that's just trying to fix every year you're trying to fix something trying to recover trying to get back on the horse on the wagon trying to recover chasing after you're not living so i I feel like that's the whole thing the length of your life you can spare yourself your 30s your 40s and everything retire earlier live actually do what you're supposed to do if you honor your father and mother interesting fact is that in matthew 19 i think it was jesus uh jesus is talking to someone and they say you're good and i think so and then he's like he replies oh he's like what is good there's only one who is good if you want to enter life keep the commandments which ones they they asked him and he's like you shall not murder you shall not commit adultery you shall not steal you shall not give false witness Honor your mother and father and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So why do you think he added that one to the five commandments? I think it's five, which he specifically states if you want to enter. I think it's very important. So yeah. anyway, that's my two cents. And tell me if it's trash or cash. And uh, yeah, please like and subscribe for more. My mic is on. Thank you. Um, Cheers.